Hello, good evening everyone and welcome to the third session of the Organic Home Gardening webinar series organized by Dilma Conservation. The series was organized following the success of the previous series on Organic Home Gardening. This time, however, you will receive a valuable certificate for your participation. There are three types of certificates which will be awarded at the end of this webinar series based on your attendance and completion of any interactive assessments. Certificate of participation will be awarded to the attendees who have only past participated in at least six sessions of this series. Certificate of merit will be awarded for the attendees who have participated in the webinar series press practice some concepts and provided photo documentation of your work. Certificate of distinction will be awarded for the attendees who have participated in the webinar series, practice all the concepts and send photos of your work. Please note that all participants must register with the working email address for the webinar series to be eligible for any of these certificates. Our resource person for the day is Mr. Anuradha Ranasinghe, who is an entrepreneur and agricultural consultant at ABBA Agroconsultancy. I welcome you on behalf of Dilma T and Dilma Conservation for today's session. If you have any questions related to today's session, you can simply put them in Q&A tab, but please refrain from asking questions on the chat section of the webinar. During this webinar, there will be interesting poll questions and you are all welcome to give them a try to make this session more interactive and interesting. Before we begin today's session on water conservation, here are some of the images that were sent to us following the last webinar on basic land preparation techniques and agronomical practices. Uh, good evening, all of you. Uh, very nice to see you again uh, during the third lecture. Uh, thank you very much, Sarindu, for sharing these pictures. So these are really lovely pictures, and we are so thrilled to see these uh, performance by our participants because uh, you have got what we have uh, taught you during previous sessions, and you have done it exactly well. So some. So one, if you if we take the first picture, they have used uh, bricks or some concrete material, and this is a uh, paper or beetle vine uh, growing uh, through vertical, uh, or, uh, vertically, and raised beds, and using uh, gunny bags or rice bags, and polythene mulch. So brick, uh, 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 you, uh, preparing beds using bricks, so different kinds of things. So. We are really happy and really uh, satisfied with your efforts because this is the way, and you are really, really uh, doing it from the, and really practicing it. Thank you so much uh, for the updates, and thank you, thank you so much for sharing these pictures with us. So, because we also will get, uh, we also get encouraged uh, once we see these uh, performances uh, by our uh, participants. Okay, uh, we'll move to the uh, today today's session. So it's uh, about uh, water conservation. So before that, I think uh, we have a poll question uh, before starting the session. Sarindu, over to you. Yeah, I'm rather. So this is the first poll question for today's session. The question is, why is water conservation important? There are four choices. To utilize rainwater, retain soil moisture at a satisfactory level, drain surplus water, and the fourth one is all of above. So it is time to uh, choose the correct answer for this uh, question for our participants. Let's see what are the cho choices of our participants today. Okay, uh, most of okay. the participants have chose that all of these uh, factors are the reasons for the conservation of the water. So, Mr. Uh, 
uh, what is the explanation for this uh, question? Yes, so I think majority have answered uh, all of the above. So, so all the factors are very important because we naturally get water through the rainfall. So we need to always uh, try to deposit in the rainwater as much, much as possible on our ground. And if you are living on a somewhat uh, in a uh, wet zone area, or if you are having uh, issues with uh, uh, water logging, definitely you need to drain the surplus water. So that's also a very important thing. And we need to always uh, keep uh, the soil moisture level at a satisfactory level. Then only we can reduce the frequency of watering. Because if once we reduce the frequency of watering, then we save a lot of our energy. That means if you are pumping water through a water, uh, through a water pump from your well, then you will be uh, losing your, uh, you, you need to spend money uh, for the electricity or else if you are using the water board or the uh, normal grid uh, connection, water connection, then you need to pay for the water. And as well as that, apart from that, you need to spend time on watering. So if you uh, try to manage water, that means if you try to conserve water in your garden, then you uh, save a lot of energy and save less your time and uh, you can maintain a average soil moisture level. So let's discuss why water conservation is important because we need to, as I mentioned before, we need to use, like, utilize the rainwater as much as possible and retain soil moisture level at, at, at a very satisfactory level throughout the year. So this is not a thing we need to practice one or two days. So if we get uh, rainfall during only a certain period of time of the year, then we need to keep that water as much as possible. So if you are, your soil is getting less amount of water, so if the water level reduces, then only you can apply additionally water. So that is very important of, uh, of the soil moisture conservation because then we will be reducing the frequency of water as because the soil is naturally saturated with the rainfall. Then some, as mentioned before, then some lands are uh, water logging and if you get a uh, uh, large amount of water through rainfall, then you need to drain the surplus water. Otherwise you will feel difficulties uh, growing crops. So we will discuss uh, further during the next slide. Yeah. So uh, then again, we need to consider uh, different aspects because there are some uh, crops which love uh, high soil moisture levels, but there are some crops, uh, they don't like too much water. So I would like to give some examples like uh, mangoes and pomegranate and oranges, most of the citrus family uh, trees like lime, lemon, orange. So all, most of these uh, crops uh, like pomegranate, they don't like too much water. So if your soil is having uh, too much water and soil the moisture level is uh, high all, all throughout the year, these kind of crops, they will grow, but sometimes they will not perform well. That means they will not flower well and they will not give a, a satisfactory yield. But there are some crops like banana. So if, it, if you take a banana tree, every day banana, the grown, fully grown banana tree needs around 40 liters of water every day. And most of the green uh, uh, vegetables like uh, spinach uh, or uh, centella or any other uh, green uh, vegetables, what we call in Singhala, Gotukola, Mukunamanda, uh, those uh, vegetables, uh, they love uh, soil, high soil moisture levels. And uh, some uh, most of the tubers, because tubers, they grow well and they deposit uh, the starch in the tubers. So most of the tubers, they need a lot of soil, uh, they need a lot of water. So always we need to uh, select crops and we need to locate uh, high moisture prefer, uh, preferring crops uh, in uh, those uh, the wet areas of your garden. But uh, the crops like uh, the citrus or mango, pomegranate, that kind of crops, you can locate uh, in, in sloppy areas so, or any uh, dry areas of your garden. So then uh, that's the basic uh, concept you need to follow. 
So always uh, try to understand about the plant water requirement. Upon, upon that, you can select uh, what plants uh, will be preferred to different areas of your, uh, of your garden. Okay, we will discuss further how to identify uh, the uh, water need and surplus. Because uh, most of the gardeners, you all love to water your plants because you always think, okay, I need to, uh, every morning I need to do the watering and every evening I need to do the watering. Uh, like us, because you always, uh, you because you, you, from the bottom of your heart, you like to water the plant and you like to keep the water, uh, keep the plant at a very uh, pleasant level and very uh, uh, good level, good condition. But uh, if, uh, you need to identify always uh, these sim symptoms or these symptoms or these signs. So sometimes plants might be uh, withering or plants may maybe get wilting, so yellowing, or poor growth can be observed, or soil, your soil can be too much compacted, or some odors will be coming from your soil. So I will exp explain you to in uh, these conditions in further. So if you if, uh, imagine if you couldn't uh, water your plants, uh, water your plant in a pot, uh, then uh, slowly the plant uh, starts to wither. That means, uh, leaves get shrink as you uh, see in this picture. So they start to uh, shrink and uh, withering. That's because of less uh, availability of water. But again, if you add more water, so if the if water accumulates in, in a pot or thing, uh, in a container, then the plant is very fleshy and it will start to wilt. So you need to identify the uh, two comparisons. So withering and wilting is two different things. And some plants, mostly the long-term crops, uh, they won't wilt or wither, but they will show uh, yellowing of leaves. So if you see yellowing of leaves uh, in a very wet area, then definitely that's, that is not the nitrogen deficiency, or that is because of uh, too much water because when uh, too much water accumulates on the root zone, then uh, roots will face difficulties in uh, in re uh, with respiration because water is locked and plants cannot uh, uh, breathe uh, through the soil. So then the uh, slowly the leaves start turning yellow. Uh, then that's another uh, sign you can identify uh, 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 identify uh, availability of too much water. And sometimes, uh, because you, you might uh, experience this, some coconut trees or some mango trees, long term, uh, longer duration trees, when you plant them at a high groundwater level, uh, you mean the groundwater level means from the uh, the bottom to up, up if we dig, uh, dig a pit. So if we find water around four to five feet, uh, the plants will. Have, uh, having a, will be having a stunt growth. That means plant will not grow up, uh, up to a certain age. That means because of the, uh, the reason is the roots cannot grow beyond that uh, that air zone because the groundwater level is very high. So if you identify that kind of a sign of a poor growth, that is of course because of uh, too availability of too much uh, water groundwater. Then again. Your soils, uh, this will happen soon, immediately after the rains, uh, your soil will get compacted. So uh, during the raining time, uh, your soil will be very muddy and uh, you may feel difficulties in walking on the soil. But soon after the, uh, after the rain, your soil can be very hardy, like concrete uh, mod, uh, like uh, it, it get too much compacted. That means uh, the less of uh, soil uh, aeration. That means uh, because of the water uh, conditions, the, the, we call it as a porosity. That means a porous uh, or availability of uh, vacuums in between uh, the soil particles. So uh, because of that also, soil get uh, too much compacted because uh, when the heavy uh, rains uh, fell down, the soil get compressed and uh, soil compacted. 
then again another thing is uh, very uh, uh, unpleasant odors will be coming from the soil uh, mostly from the water logging areas so those kind of things also you need to identify uh, whether what is uh, uh, scarce or what is having a uh, surplus in your garden okay we will discuss uh, how to identify uh, the soil moisture level in your garden so this is a very simple uh, technique i will explain it to you how to do it uh, during the next slide so i think poll question is coming so before that turn uh, it over to you uh, you can ask from our past participant what is the best uh, soil moisture level Arindu? Yeah, I'm right. This is the second poll <coughs> question for today's session. Uh, you can see there are three uh, pictures of the soil samples. And the question is, out of these three samples, which is the average ideal moisture level? So let's see the choices of today's participants. Yeah. So most of the people think the second uh, sample is the most uh, average and ideal moisture level. So, Mr. Brother, can you explain this? Yes, exactly correct. I think most of the, the participants clearly understood uh, the, the correct answer. So this is a very simple technique. So I will explain it to you in the next slide how to do this. Because most of the participants having this problem because they think my plants are not getting enough water. So especially when you uh, when you are doing container gardening, like mean uh, if you're growing on poly bags or pots or any other containers. So you need to clearly identify this because uh, never enc uh, encourage more watering uh, and and you need to think in this way, watering is not a practice. So you don't, don't think, okay, every morning I need to water my plants, every evening I need to water my plants. So that is not a practice. You need to always identify uh, when your plants need water. It's like us. So when we thirsty, only we drink water. So plants also like us. So always you need to think, and you need to uh, clearly identify when my plants are showing uh, uh, signs when they, uh, when they need water. So, so as I mentioned before in the previous slides, if you see wilter, wilting or withering, then you can identify that's one, one way. If, but especially most, this is very important for the container gardeners because uh, as a practice, they always do watering. So then, Actually, we don't need to water because if our uh, the if the containers or if the soil is saturated enough with water, we don't need to uh, the water our plants because it will add additional cost to our water bill or the electricity bill. So this is a very simple technique. You can take a fistful of uh, soil, a handful of sand, uh, soil uh, like this. Then you can squeeze it tightly. Then uh, you can identify the three stages. So, shall we move to the previous slide, please? No, previous. No. Okay. Now, if you uh, once you squeeze it, if water comes through this uh, uh, through your fingers, that means your soil is too much uh, moist. That means the plants are having plenty of water. So never water at this stage. Okay. Then if you go to the th th third picture, if this uh, soil easily breaks down, that means 
your soil does not have enough water. So if you if you fish this like uh, fish the soil sample like this, and if it easily break down like a like a powdery manner, that means your soil is not in having enough water. Once you squeeze, and if you slowly remove this, and it slowly breaks down into pieces, that means that's the average soil moisture level. I think you got uh, my point. If you, once you squeeze it, if water comes through your fingers, that means your soil is too moist. But if you cannot uh, uh, squeeze and cannot form a, form a uh, ball or form a uh, in a solid form, that means if it breaks very easily, that means your soil is not having uh, enough water. But if you can make uh, form a, this kind of a shape or a, uh, a ball kind of a thing, and and it easily breaks with your fingertips, that means your soil is having enough water. So that is a simple technique you can follow uh, in your garden. Uh, before watering, please uh, take a, a handful of sand or the uh, a handful of soil from your container and try to squeeze it. So once one when you do one or two uh, several times, then you will identify. Okay, okay. Today my plants are having enough water because uh, today is not too. Uh, today is not a very shiny, uh, sunny day. Okay. Uh, a lot of clouds are there, so plant uh, respiration and transpiration rates are very low. So the soil uh, water loss from the soil is less. So likewise, you need to always observe the environmental factors. If it's a rainy day, uh, if the sun is uh, down, then uh, plant activity is reduced. So then the soil water loss is less. So even if you have a doubt, you can uh, practice this uh, method and identify whether do I should I need to water the plants or can I take another uh, break and can I water the plants during the following day. So this is this is the easiest technique you can follow uh, at your garden. So as I mentioned uh, before, so uh, 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 you need to always adjust the watering. So it's not a practice. So you need to observe and based on your observation, uh, and uh, need to do the watering. So always try to water your plants if you are not having a very big garden, try to use a watering can or a simple container uh, because then uh, I will mention it during the uh, crop prote protection uh, lecture also. Because if you walk each and single plant, every day you will observe your plant. Then if there's any simple change in your plant, you can identify. Because in home gardening, we are not growing thousands of plants. We will be growing only 10 chili plants, uh, two bitter god vines, or so, uh, a few uh, another uh, radishes or carrots or anything. So if you if you have enough time and if you uh, once you do watering, then every day uh, you can see your plants. And if there's any change, definitely you will notice it. So always uh, try to water your plants with a watering can instead of a horse then then you to the point you can water and you can uh, reduce the water consumption as well uh, then uh, always try to adhere to the weather pattern because some days are very sunny so those days you may need to water during the morning as well as evening but there are some days normal days so then you can if you watering uh, do watering only one uh, time per day that will be enough for your plants or sometimes there will be drizzling or rainy days, then you don't need to water your plants at all. So likewise, uh, then uh, that's you need to always uh, be familiar with the uh, weather pattern and the weather forecast. And the other thing, very important thing is always try to water uh, your plants during morning if you have enough time, because evening uh, time, the night night time, the temperature is also very low. And uh, the sun is also not available. So plants can uh, survive because of the dew and mist. So plants can survive. So during the sunny days, it's always better if you can plant, uh, if you can water your plants during morning. 
then the uh, water stress will be very much reduced and uh, if you even if you add surplus water uh, it will be uh, go out uh, from the plants through the evaporation and transpiration so it's advisable to do watering uh, as much as possible it depends on your time availability but if you have time please do watering in the morning instead of evening okay so now we discussed uh, about the importance of watering now we need to think about how we can uh, conserve water in our garden because as i mentioned before water conservation is important because the watering frequency because if you water your plants every morning and evening it it's cost you a lot electricity water your time and energy if you can uh, water your plants at least once uh, once in two uh, days it means if you water today and tomorrow no watering and tomorrow, uh, day after then you can save your time and you can uh, you can uh, use that time uh, to another productive work, uh, work in your garden so water conservation is very important that's why uh, water conservation because we are reducing the watering fre frequency and the um, amount of water what uh, what will we be provided to the plants so water conservation means we keep uh, we maintain the soil moisture level that means we are not adding too much water or we try to uh, save water or we try to keep the water in the uh, in the soil that means without losing we uh, try to conserve the water so we can do mulching uh, and uh, we can use banana trunks we can use coconut husk uh, husk beds husk pits and contour drains pitch irrigation different kinds of mega bottles so i will explain to you how we can conserve water and uh, how we can use the water efficiently in next slides so this is the basic uh concept what we can do it's mulching so mulching uh, i think i mentioned you in a different uh, in a, in the previous session also so uh this is very important factor especially if you are doing uh, large scale gardening uh, uh to uh, conserve water so we can use uh, whatever all the grasses or any other material or sometimes if you have more organic manure those things so green manure like gildisiria wild sunflower so we can uh, apply a thin layer of whatever the material available uh, or sometimes poly mulch so there are polythene mulches also available like a polythene sheet but you don't need to go uh, into that kind of expensive waste but whatever the organic material you have you can mulch you can apply a thin layer as uh, you see in this picture or oh, any green manure if you trim your fence uh, once you prune your fence you can apply that little area or other or any other branches you can chop into small pieces you can apply a thin layer on the side then it will reduce the evaporation and sometimes the surface runoff because if you get a rainfall this uh, this mulch will break uh, the speed so the soil have more time to absorb water so that is the importance of mulching so one thing is it uh, because the direct sunlight uh, doesn't come to the soil so it reduces the evaporation and when it during the raining time if you have a mulch and mul the mulch will also absorb more water and it will reduce the speed of the rain drops so then it will get more time then the soil have more time to uh, absorb water uh, with the time so the important thing is if you mulch please don't try to uh, put the mulch uh, up to the uh, trunk or up to the base of the plant so always try to leave so what we call is uh, leaf circle so so if you take a plant uh, uh, the this is the surrounding area to uh, see the spread of the leaves that we call is the circle of uh, the leaf circle so up to that circle you can put the mulch so better to keep uh, the, the root base open because if uh, it will reduce uh, more fungal uh, problems and it will give more aeration and uh, uh, more uh, drying uh, uh, 
opportunities to the root base. So always you can merge all the other areas, but keep at least uh, one or it depends on the plant. If you uh, put, uh, uh, if you are growing a perennial tree, it's uh, that means longer duration tree, it's better to keep one feet uh, distance from the base of the plant. Otherwise, uh, at least try to keep a, a small circle. If you march a tomato plant, uh, keep at least 10 centimeter circle uh, around the root zone at the base of the plant and do the marching. Because if sometimes we are putting organic material, so organic material can be infected through different fungus, then these fungus can be attack the plant. So always uh, try to do uh, mulching. Apply mulch as everywhere, but keep the roots on a little bit free. So that's the important factor when we need to discuss about mulching. Uh, then this is another a uh, very useful uh, technique this is but this is commonly used uh, in in coconut cultivation but other crop cultivation uh, also we can use this uh, so this is very much appropriate for the sandy soils because as you know most of the sandy soils they are having very they are lacking water holding capacity so and the most of the gravel soils also so if we are doing if we are doing any planting in uh, sandy soils or gravel soils especially uh, coconuts or any other fruit plants we can add coconut husks as husk pits we call them as husk pits so we can dig uh, dig a hole and we can add few coconut husks and uh, close uh, close the pit uh, using the uh, fertilizer, uh, uh, organic fertilizer and the topsoil and we can do the plant uh, do the planting the importance is the coconut husk absorb water. So if you take uh, one kilo of a coconut husk, it can absorb six times. That means six uh, kilos of water, five kilos of water it can uh, absorb. So where during the raining time, so this will act as a sponge and absorb water, more water as much as possible and it will slowly release to the soil and to the plant uh, during the dry uh, season. So this is very effective, especially uh, when you are growing coconut uh, in wet zone, uh, in uh, sandy and gravel soils. This is a very effective technique. Uh, so always try to follow this kind of techniques. If you have more space and if you have more, uh, if you are going for perennial cultivation. And this is also another interesting uh, concept you can do uh, during your home gardening. Uh, these these beds made from coconut husk. You can remove coconut husk yeah, in, into sing, singular uh, single pieces, and you can make a trench and bury them and prepare a nice bed like this. So this also will store soil moisture, and it will slowly. The importance of coconut husk is it it's slowly releasing uh, the moisture time to time uh, when soil needed. The, that's the most important thing. If you may prepare beds like this, the, during the rain time, it will absorb water and it will slowly release, uh, uh, ready, release water to the beds. So, and uh, this, uh, this, and mostly because coconut, it's a five, uh, because of the fiber content, uh, uh, coconut uh, has uh, very much resistant to fungal rot. So, that's another advantage. Uh, of using coconut husk. So try to uh, implement these conditions. And if you have bigger lands, then you can do the contour drains. So contour drains means according to the slope, we can dig trenches. So this is very much appropriate for the bigger lands, not uh, small home gardeners. Uh, so this kind of drains you can uh, prepare all along your garden. And, and the drains also should not be uh, continuous drains uh, from different parts you can need to block it so when the when the rain comes uh, these drains will hold water and the surplus water only will reduce uh, will release from these block uh, blocked areas so if we get a uh, small drain uh, then we can hold so uh, hold water as much as possible uh, because of this contour drain and the plants will get them uh, then that uh, the soil have more time to absorb them slowly because if you dig a 
continuous trench like this, all the additional water will go and uh, uh, get out from uh, go out from your uh, garden or, or the your cultivation. So always better to have uh, uh, drains uh, with uh, with uh, these kind of blocks. Then it will hold water and it will release uh, the only the additional water. And the, the soil have more time to absorb water uh, through contour drains. Then uh, this is also another uh, appropriate technique we can use, especially if you're growing uh, crops, uh, especially perennial crops like coconuts or mangoes during the, uh, in the dry zone. So you can make, a, make soil, uh, what we call this as basins. It's like a basin. You can make a basin, you can make a uh, small uh, uh, bund around the tree. So all the water, uh, all the water gets um, uh, gets uh, connects collects uh, uh, comes through these leaves and trunks. We we'll collect uh, around the roots on. So this is like uh, like a basin. Uh, then uh, then it, this will hold more time. Uh, this will hold water, and with the time, then soil have more uh, time to absorb them. So this is the very this is the importance of uh, rainwater harvesting or what you call the using the rainwater because now the rainfall intensity is high because we get huge amount of water during a shorter period. So what happens is soil cannot absorb it because uh, during a shorter time uh, time period because our soils are not having enough organic matter and enough absorbance. So if we get a high rainfall during a short time period, all the water will get drained off from the soil. So soil doesn't have enough time to absorb it. But if we make this kind of technique, when it rains, uh, the water will be blocked in these kind of basins and it will slowly absorb to the uh, ground. But uh, if you are having, uh, if you are growing uh, crops in a water logging area, uh, never uh, do this kind of thing because this that it will uh, uh, multiply the problem because this basin also will collect water and and then naturally your ground also uh, logging water so this is very much appropriate for the sandy and uh, dry soils not appropriate for the uh, for the water logging condition uh, this is also very uh, effective uh, technology. Uh, which are irrigation, what they call, uh, because this is, uh, we bury a porous clay pot. So as you know, clay pots are very porous. So it, it, ha it has ability to uh, evaporate water through the minute holes of the, uh, the clay, uh, clay surface. So if you dig a clay pot like this next to your plant, and uh, it will slowly release water to the plant, uh, to the clay surface and to the soil. So uh, it will continuously supply to the water, but the initial cost is a little bit high when you do uh, when you set up this kind of a thing. But uh, but if you can uh, do this kind of a method, and uh, this is another system, they bury a clay pot and they use a choir rope uh, which connects to the bottom of the pot. Uh, so the choir rope uh, carries water along uh, along the bed as a drip and drip line. Then the plant can slowly absorb that water. When the uh, the water amount is uh, less, uh, decrease, time to time you can uh, top up and uh, fill this water container. So this is another uh, moderate, uh, somewhat uh, moderate technology we can use. Uh, when applying water. Uh, so this is also, uh, you can use, uh, uh, you can uh, use the recycled materials like uh, self-watering pots or bottle drip uh, feeders. You can sink a water bottle next to your plant. Uh, you can make create uh, some holes and you can time to time, uh, you can, uh, water this plant. So this is very much uh, suitable because if you have a small minute garden uh, in your rooftop or in your balcony and if you are going out 
uh, on a holiday, you can set up this kind of a system and uh, you can put some water and slowly your plants will get water. So even uh, with your absence, the plants will get uh, water slowly. So you can control the uh, water release uh, amount of uh, amount of uh, releasing water uh, through the holes. Uh, if you uh, create a very uh, tiny hole, then very small amount of water will be released to the plant. So you can be very creative and use some uh, saline uh, bottles or any mega bottles and some uh, uh, tubes, and you can create your own uh, model. Uh, for your minute uh, tiny uh, gardens. So these are uh, some advanced uh, uh, concepts, but it's better if you get a basic idea what this uh, thing. So one thing is rainwater housing. So this is a, a picture actually functioning at uh, Dilma Conser Conservation Center in Katubad. So we got this picture from their uh, water conservation, uh, rainwater housing unit. So all the water collects uh, comes from the gutters during rain time, they collect. And time, uh, then they connect uh, these things uh, to the main water line and they use to water the plants. And uh, there's another system uh, called uh, gray water. Gray water means all the kitchen water and the uh, the water comes from the washing machines and bathroom, not uh, not coming through the toilets. Uh, we convert them to a, uh, another uh, tank, and we can directly supply to uh, to the plants. So we can uh, do some uh, minute, uh, simple filtering system, and we can uh, apply them to the plants. So we call it as grey water uh, housing technique. So all the wastewater which we uh, collect in the garden, uh, gardens, we can use them. So you also can uh, do all the rainwater, uh, all the uh, the water. If you have bigger gardens, it's better if uh, you can implement this kind of a system. There are some plants like cochlea and uh, some aquatic plants you can grow uh, using uh, this grey water, but uh, all the washed off water which collects in your uh, house so this is another this is an advanced uh, technique we call it as a drip irrigation so we give uh, water as drips like as drops so uh, we can uh, control the water uh, uh, flowering rate and we directly supply to the uh, water to the base of the plant so this is the drip uh, watering system uh, it's a very efficient system and we can reduce uh, the water consumption significantly if we use this kind of a drip system. But the problem is uh, the overhead is uh, very high because we need to invest a lot on this kind of a system and mostly appropriate for the large scale uh, cultivations, not for the home garden. But it's better if you get an idea uh, all this, about all these concepts. Okay, I think uh, I have covered all the areas, but uh, we have more time to ask questions and I'm happy to answer. Uh, floor is open for you. Yeah, Mr. there is a question from one of our attendees. The question is, how much water need for vegetable plants? Yes, so it's, uh, it's like this. So if you're, if your plants are very small, smaller, so it's very hard to do the do, do a calculation. So best thing is, as I mentioned before, uh, you uh, as as I mentioned in the previous practical, uh, always try to get a soil sample and try to uh, understand the soil moisture level. If your soil uh, moisture level is at level two, then you don't need to water. If your plant show, show, shows uh, signs like uh, wilting or withering, uh, especially withering, withering uh, because of too much watering, uh, withering, then you can identify, okay, this is the uh, exact time for watering. So always don't wait until plants get withered. So 
try to get a handful of uh, soil and uh, space it and see. Uh, and uh, if you practice this, then you eventually you will understand, okay, this is the exact soil moisture level. So it's very hard to tell because it's always varies according to the environmental conditions. So always uh, try to observe the soil moisture level and try to identify it and try to water the, your plants based on that. Yeah, there is another question about uh, grey water systems that uh, you have mentioned that uh, uh, converting these uh, bathroom and uh, yes. washing machine water. Yes. So they are, uh, yeah, one is asking, uh, is there any uh, bad effect coming from the soap and other uh, washing powders? Uh, with this water to the plants? Yes, uh, there can be uh, different uh, negative uh, things also can be happen, but uh, it's uh, but this is uh, very much appropriate for large scale uh, gardens. So uh, if you are growing bananas or some other highly water loving crops, uh, you can use this uh, thing. So always try to use uh, less uh, uh, because we, we use them for our uh, consume, our uh, our pub, that means our cleaning our clothes and all to apply in our bodies. So there are some negative effects, but uh, the, it's a very controversial topic uh, in the, in other countries also how to use and how to do grey water systems because uh, some people. Uh, say some fecal material also can be uh, accumulated uh, when we are using grey water. It's, uh, we need to uh, clearly think and especially if you're growing green leaves or that kind of crops, never uh, use grey water uh, to apply those kind of crops. But if you're growing perennial crops like banana or any other large scale crops, uh, definitely you can use that water uh, for uh, grey water. But uh, for vegetables, or especially for leaf, leaf vegetables, I know I would not encourage you to apply grey water for that kind of crops. There is another question from uh, one of our attendees. The question is, how do you reduce soil moisture in rainy season of tea? Yes, very good question. So. During the rainy season, you need to always prepare raised beds. So, as I mentioned to you in the previous session, always you need to uh, make raised beds, then there will be drains. So, uh, a surplus water will go through the uh, drains of the raised beds. And uh, uh, especially, and uh, spe if your soil is, uh, I will connect to that uh, previous, uh, 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 there's another question also from Mr. Uh, Raja, what are the better soil water conservation method, methods of clay soil? So if you are growing uh, in a clay soil, uh, you need to always add more sand and more organic matter, then the, 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 your, your soil will convert into a uh, loamy soil. So if you are growing in a rainy season, I will uh, uh, combine two, two, uh, two questions into one. So even if in a rainy season, if your soil is more loamy and more porous, uh, then your beds won't having uh, issues uh, with water logging because all the surplus water will drain off because your, your soil is loamy and more porous. So that is the best way uh, you need to do. Especially don't uh, uh, prepare bigger beds and uh, try to uh, prepare narrow beds and narrow race beds then uh, you can have uh, uh, drains at least uh, one meter after one meter after another. Then uh, that will reduce the surplus water. And uh, if it's a clay soil, uh, try to add more uh, sand and uh, more organic matter. Uh, and then that will uh, reduce uh, the water holding capacity. So, uh, 
we have come to the end of today's session and before we uh, wind up Tarindu, i have i think we have another question please explain about cover cropping yeah yes uh, cover cropping means uh, we uh, before starting another crop we usually uh, grow another uh, like a green manure so crops like sun hem uh, or uh, especially like if you uh, take uh, coconut or rubber cultivation we grow calipogonium or different crops so they uh, act as a uh, ground cover so most of these uh, crops are legumes so that means legumes mean they fix nitrogen so they absorb uh, nitrogen from the air and they convert uh, and uh, fix nitrogen uh, to the soil so cover cropping means uh, we grow that kind of crops uh, on the soil in between other crops and time to time we can uh, uh, till or chop and uh, add them to the uh, uh, ground uh, that will as uh, act as a natural mulch as well as uh, they give some additional uh, soil nutrients to the uh, additional nutrients to the soil so that's the basic uh, concept of uh, cover cropping it's it acts as a cover i think there's another the chemicals in soapy water will absorb the plants and most of the chemicals are harmful to the body yes you cannot use it without treatment definitely so i mentioned so if you have uh, if you can it's better to go uh, convert gray water through a filtration unit so it's uh, it's another cost uh, involving uh, thing but uh, that's why i'm always thinking uh, telling you it's a very controversial topic so i cannot uh, this, that it will it will lead to another session so of course we should not there are some chemicals uh, in all the soap and especially for the laundry powder and these things so that definitely if it add them directly to the our ground definitely our soil will be uh, damaged so always we need to go through a filtration system but uh, some uh, but if you are living in a village or if you are using very less amount of uh, this kind of art artificial soaps or anything uh, no worries you can use you can convert that water channel because i have seen in many areas especially in the northern province they have converted their uh, uh, water the water moving from the wells and all the thing uh, to their banana backyards and banana cultivation so it's all up to you so it's uh, depend on your choice is chlorine added water safe for plants because we use pipe plants no issue at all because chlorine uh, because uh, if you store keep uh, chlorinated water for several hours uh, chlorine uh, evaporates and there's no big harm uh, of adding uh, chlorinated water so if you having uh, using chlorinated water always try to use the watering intensity that means if you uh, do more mulching and uh, try to uh reduce the watering frequency because it it will directly help you to reduce your water bill so try to do add more organic manure and do mulching and try to identify the exact uh, watering point and uh, then uh, you can reduce your water so so there's no big harm using of chlorine water uh there's another question uh, does biochar help to conserve soil moisture yes of course because biochar having uh, same, same like choir or choir does biochar can absorb more water uh during uh, the rainy time so it will hold more water and slowly reduce uh, uh water to the uh, to soil and to the plants so i think you will be having next not the next uh, after after another two sessions you will be having another session on uh, biochar then you will get to know more information about uh, application of biochar and what are the benefits of using biochar
I think that is these are all questions, no? Yeah. So we have come to the end of today's session. And before we wind up, there are a few announcements. Please be sure to type in your email address correctly when you register for the next webinar, as you will not receive the Zoom link if the address is incorrect. You will receive a feedback form one day after the webinar, and please be sure to fill and submit the form. Please note that there will be no assessments for this session of the series. However, you are invited to send in any photographs of the water conservation methods practiced in your home garden. I would like to thank you, Mr. Anuradha, on behalf of Dilmati and Dilma Conservation for your valuable time and sharing some amazing information with us today. Thank you to all participants for joining us today. And hopefully the next webinar for the Organic Home Gardening webinar series on crop selection, establishment and nursery management will be held on the 1st of February 2022. We will add today's webinar video to our home gardening playlist, YouTube home gardening playlist. And you can find the link to the playlist in the chat section. Yeah. With that, it is time to conclude our webinar for the day. Have a good day and be safe.